Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sipping Saturday. This is a special edition, man. I'm so excited about this. This is the end of the year. If you're new here, man, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you here. If you search plumbing and this is where you ended up and they brought you in on this live stream, either live or pre-recorded, hang out. Man, I've got some great people in here. We're going to talk about some cool stuff today. If you're looking for something specific, jump over into the channel, search what it is you're looking for. We've got a ton of videos out there. If you're here live and you're enjoying it, jump in, ask a question. I just ask that you put a cue in front of it. And I am sure we're going to have a ton of questions today. And as you can see, I have a special guest in here. Uh, now, when it comes to marketing, I have learned so much and probably the last couple of weeks that just things I didn't know. So, Dennis Hugh, welcome to Dallas, Texas. Glad to Thank have you, you, Roger. Man, this is going to be fun. Love hanging at the outhouse. Yeah. Well, welcome to the outhouse. Uh, it's been fun. And I'm going to put my cameras on automatic. That way I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to jump over here. And we'll jump into comments here in a minute. Uh, this is going to be fun. <clears throat> because today we're talking about the truth behind SEO that marketing companies, they don't want you to know. And there's a lot of stuff I found out lately that I know why they don't want you to know too. But we're going to jump in. We're going to talk about it. And here in a little bit, what we'll be like, look, if, you, if you're in here, you've, you've got your own company, things like that, leave a comment. Let us know who you are, where you're at. But but let's just start out. Number one, marketing is such a big deal for yeah. any, and, and guys, I say plumbing, but any local service provider, correct? Yeah. It's 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 what makes us live. It was what makes our phone ring. It's what helps our business grow. Are marketing companies telling people the truth? Are they opening their lips? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If their lips are moving, they're lying. Uh, man, boy, and that's the truth. Uh, that, that's a tough way to put it, but uh, look, I started doing social media and, and I've told you because I spent $47,000 on multiple companies and it made my phone stop ringing completely stop. So I started learning social media, but luckily through social media, I've grown and, and done some really cool stuff and got introduced to you. So let's start out with, with the first thing that introduced me to you. And, and it was a great conversation. And we're in a mastermind together. So I'm in here with, with, with five other people and Dennis. And David Breyer starts talking mm -hmm. about a knowledge panel. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait, what, what is a knowledge panel? So let me ask you that so people here can understand mm -hmm. what is a knowledge panel? Well, knowledge panels pulled out of the, the knowledge grab. So if I pull out my phone and I say, Hey, Siri, search Google for Roger Wakefield. Oh, that's not going to be good. Hey, Siri, search Google for Roger Wakefield. And then what you get is this beautiful set of results, which is part of a knowledge panel. So it shows like book character. But you see all these things. You're going to see all these colored boxes. I know it's kind of hard to see here, but... When Google has a good idea of who you are, it's going to show your age and your top videos and your company and where you've been because it's pulling from the full knowledge graph. So Google's big database is called the knowledge graph. And the knowledge graph, think of it as like every object, <clears throat> every photo, every <clears throat> person, every place, every business, every product, every single thing here has attributes attached to it. Mm -hmm. Like there's a price, there's a location, there's, you know, there, think of it like this gigantic molecule. So if you and I had steak last night at this place called Texas. And we did. And we took a picture of it and we posted that on Google Maps mm -hmm. and tied it to the location. Now all those entities are connected together, right? I like that. And if we're together on the same YouTube channel or if Roger and Tommy Mello are together on a live stream, that's sending a signal to Google that these particular entities are connected. And... You know that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time mm -hmm. with. Well, Google's applying the same kind of thing by trying to guess like, who is Roger based on everything we know about what's connected to Roger. So SEO has always been about links, about websites that are linking to one another. But as you know, you know, 20 
30 years ago, it was only websites. Now there's social media and apps and whatnot. So instead of just links between websites, now it's tweets. Now it's, you know, likes, shares, and comments. Now it's all these other pieces. So Google is trying to look at all those signals of who's connected to each other. So when someone search Roger, searches Roger Wakefield, what are all the other things that are similar to Roger Wakefield? So as a plumbing company, and guys, when I use the word plumbing, you can pull out plumbing, put in electrical, roofing, HVAC, chiropractor, dentist. It, it doesn't matter. Garage yeah. door. Talking about yeah. Tommy. Yeah. So when I talk plumbing, you, you can put in real estate agent. Whatever it is you are, whatever it is you think you are, that you want Google to know. When we hire, when I hire a marketing company here, are they looking at it like that? No. They're looking at it from the standpoint of a salesperson trying to sell a package. And, the, and that package is really just a website. A, a website. Maybe they'll do some video editing. Maybe they'll do what they call some SEO or whatnot. But if, if you are a garage door company in Phoenix, you need to show that you're related. You're in Phoenix and you, you know about Phoenix. You're connected to other businesses and people and parks and restaurants and whatever in Phoenix. And you need to be talking about garage doors, fixing garage doors, what your technicians are doing. Because Google's looking for that geo and category signal. Now, if you hire a marketing company, they have to be able to send that signal to be even stronger to Google. So if they're not in Phoenix and they don't know anything about garage doors, how are they going to send a stronger signal to Google? Uh, man, okay, so, so look, I've told you, I've been ripped off by marketing companies. I want to jump in the chat real quick just to, to say hello to some people. Architectural Sheet Metal 101 in the house. Good day to you, brother. Good to see you in here. Uh, man, I'm, I'm looking at my barn. I need to raise my roof and... Standing same. So here we go. This is going to be great information for you today. So, so man, listen to this. Uh, yes, we're ready to go. Andrew Bagley, how are you? Good to see you in here. Kevin Orr, we are getting ready to roll. Uh, Henry Wakefield Square. Oh, Kevin Orr, there you are. Henry Wakefield in the house helping get everything ready. Kat says, hi, everyone. How are you? And Jay Elkar, how are you? Good to have you in here. So here, here's the deal. And when, when I started learning about this, I literally, okay, to me, SEO, when marketing companies talk to me, what I'm thinking is they're going to make my page get found. And I say page mm -hmm. because I've always thought, look, it's a website. Find my website. And in the past three days, we've looked at a lot of different websites. And most websites, including one of mine, is getting found for page one, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's not good for your website, is it? No. Oh, what, so what, is the, what is SEO really about? You know, when who doesn't want to show up number one when someone types in Richardson Emergency Plumber? Of course. So you that's bet. why marketing companies are selling into that pain. Because when they sell SEO, what you hear is, oh, you're going to help me rank number one on all these plumbing-related keywords mm -hmm. of people that live within five miles of Richardson. But if we break down what is SEO exactly, so if you're paying a marketing company to do SEO, based on what you know, what mm -hmm. are they actually doing? You, you know, man, I thought prior to looking behind the scenes at my wife, I felt I, I feel like I'm hanging out with the Wizard of Oz because he's like, look, let me show you what's really going on back here. And from me, what I thought is what I've asked them to do is look, if somebody searches plumbing in Richardson, Texas, plumbing in Plano, plumbing in Allen, plumbing in Carrollton. Mm -hmm. I want to be found. Yeah. And and then if they search water heater flushing in those same cities, I want to be found. And I've had one other website person tell me, look, you need a page. And guys, I want y'all to hear this, a page for every city and service you have. Mm -hmm. Those are called location service pages. LSPs. Okay. Get them. But, but here's, and here's why a lot of us don't do it. I remember when I built my website, we started out with 20, 25 pages. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, not the last one, but the one before was about five grand to build uh -huh. out that many pages. Mm -hmm. not, that's a pretty good price, believe it or not, because I've had people quote me 30,000 to build smaller websites, mm -hmm. but we built out 20 pages and then it's like, okay, every time you move to another city, we're going to add 10 or 20 pages. That's going to be another thousand, two thousand dollars. Y'all are going to die when you hear this. Dennis, how long does it take you to add 10 pages to a website? Two hours. 
at the longest. Guys at the longest. And we just hired someone out of Pakistan to rebuild the Leak Pro website, which is like 28 some pages. And how much are we paying for that? 375. Rebuild it, take it out of one platform, which is a, it's what a lot of marketing companies are getting to. It's not WordPress. It's a custom. It's Duda, which is made for agencies that want to have many, many websites. And, and don't get me wrong, Duda's yeah. good. Nothing wrong with that, yeah. Not, nothing at all wrong with that. I have friends at Duda. And, and it's great for a marketing company because they're trying to manage 100 websites. Right. It makes it easy. It's just, it's, it's like a plug and play thing. You just jump in real easy. Yeah. Why don't they want to do WordPress? Why Word- don't most companies want to do WordPress? Well, most companies do do okay. WordPress. So 25% of the websites on the internet are using WordPress. But WordPress has room for screwing things up because there's a lot of plugins. There's a lot of ways to customize. You ha- If you're using WordPress as an open source framework, you have to host it somewhere. So then you have to use like a WP Engine or WordPress.com or some other place. So there's just more details. And if I'm a marketing agency... I don't want clients screwing with the website because then I have to reinstall it or roll back mistakes they've made. Or, you know, the last thing you want is clients screwing with the website if they don't know what they're doing. So I can see why they want to lock it down and have a Duda or one of these other platforms. Yeah, guys, look, I, I can tell you, in, you said something the other day. So, guys, y'all are safe. You said most people can handle this for about 90 minutes. Yeah. Because we've been going through back doors, behind the scenes, look at it this way, jump in here. And, I mean, we did this eight, nine hours yesterday. Yeah. And we did it the day before. And you're like, Roger, you're, you're different because you just you keep going. I, the, guys, I'm a sponge when it comes to this because this is how we change our lives right here. And that's why I get excited about it. So if you are in business, if you're ever thinking about being in business, if you work for a business, I think I pretty much covered everybody there. You need to understand this stuff because one day this is going to affect you because Google's changing the way they do things. Yeah. They're changing the way they look at things. And I want to jump back in the comments real quick for just a minute. Uh, Mike Grimaldi, how are you? Good to see you in here. This is great, interesting talk. Brother, we are just getting started. Because, I mean, you know, Dennis brings in all this money. And he's like, look, that this is what it's all about right here. And when I looked at it and realized out of this big stack of money he bought, Right there's about 50 grand, and that's how much I paid marketing companies to make my phone stop ringing. And guys, you heard me. I made it stop ringing, or I didn't, they did, but I paid them 47 grand to do that. That will kill a business. So that's why we're talking about what we're talking about, and and, and I'm going to jump back in here in the comments, but I want y'all to think about how important this is for you, because those of y'all that work for companies that are like, man, we're slow today. They don't have to be. Mm-hmm. There's ways to fix that, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit with, with dollar a yep. day. Yep. Uh, but we're talking about things to help you learn what Google's looking for now, how they're changing, how they're tying it all together, how Google's AI is, is crawling around looking at things that, that we're not even thinking about. How are me and Tommy tied together? Yep. Why is that important? Tommy's got domain authority. Roger's got domain authority. They're tied together, so mm-hmm. when they talk... This is probably something people want to hear about. Mm-hmm. It, it's neat. So let me jump in here real quick. ICAST Enterprises, good to see you in here. Hello from Tennessee. Roger Battencourt, how are you? Uh, says, Roger, you are the best. Well, you're a Roger. You may Roger, be the Roger. Best. Roger, Roger. The Trade Talks is in the house. Guys, if you have not subscribed to our other channel, and I've got to tell you, we just shot a podcast over here that will blow your mind. Okay? It's a lot of the same stuff. SEO companies don't want you to know these things we're talking about because most of the SEO companies out there, I'll ask you, ask him a question that I asked earlier. How many SEO companies are out there doing the right thing each and every day? Almost none. Almost none. But I'll tell you why. And then I'll tell you what you need to do about it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I came up with a great idea last night Uh or the night before. And I told, Roger Henry to bring a bathroom. Hey, Randy, Randy, bring it in here, will you? I I know you got it up here. I want you to, and I'm sure you're listening. So imagine, Roger, that I'm obese. I've lost almost 60 pounds in the last year, right? I'm fat, and I step on the bathroom scale. I look at it, and it says 223 pounds, and I'm like so mad at the bathroom scale because it tells me that I'm fat. So I hire a bathroom scale optimizer. 
because I want it to show a different number. I want it to show 165 pounds, which is what I weigh now, instead of 223 pounds, right? Thank you, Scott. So, so here's the bathroom scale, and this is basically Google. So I want to hire someone to optimize my bathroom scale, and I pay a bathroom scale optimizer $3,000 a month. And, you know, like the other Roger said, it's been two months, and I'm paying this bathroom scale optimizer. Roger, why won't that work? Why, why can't I pay a bathroom scale up? Because, look, the bathroom scale, it's got all kinds of fancy electronics. I don't really understand how it does its thing. I mean, I'm just a, you know, a plumber or a contractor. I don't know anything about all the sophisticated stuff inside here. So I need to hire a bathroom scale optimizer to help me lose weight, right? Mm -hmm. What will happen when I hire that? Why won't that work? Well, because the problem's not the bathroom scale. And, and here's the thing. There's nothing to be optimized. The scale is what you build it to be. It does what it's built to do. Yeah. Just because you optimize it doesn't mean I'm going to lose weight. But I could try to fool the scale. Oh, yeah, we can So do that. I could try to hold on to some helium balloons, or I could have one foot still on the ground while one foot's on the scale to try to get the scale to say a different number. But it's, the scale is more and more accurate. You know, these scales are now coming out, and they're measuring your body fat. They're measuring your metabolism. They're measuring your HRV. The, you, you know, these scales are getting fancy. It's not just the one that tells you only the weight now. Like that, These things have sophisticated things inside them. So instead of me trying to fool the scale, which is trying to fool Google, mm -hmm. if I want to lose weight, I've got to eat right. I have to sleep right. I have to exercise. There's things I have to do. I could hire the best coach. I could hire a bathroom scale optimizer, but they're not going to help me lose weight because it's up to me. The problem's not the scale. Yeah. Don't blame the spoon because you're fat. Absolutely. Right? Man. So how does that relate to SEO? Here's the key insight. We're covering lots of things, but if, you, if all the stuff is like technical, difficult to understand, ranking in search results. SEO is the result of the activities of creating content that you place in different places, the content that reflects the relationships and expertise that you have, the customers that love you, the technicians that you have, the experience that you have. All of that is content like Roger or Tommy, these other folks make, that gets posted on your website, on your YouTube, get posted on other people's websites. So that is what drives SEO because Google sees that you have these relationships. Google sees this content. Google sees reviews. Google sees where you are. Google sees where you're posting photos. Google sees like what's going on on your website. Google sees what these people are searching for. And the result of that is SEO. So what you do, you, you don't do SEO. What you do is you enable more content to be created related to your geo in your category. Mm -hmm. So if some person who's an SEO expert doesn't know about your city and doesn't know about plumbing and HVAC, how are they going to increase that signal? It's going to be really hard. They could be the best website builder in the world. It doesn't matter. They could have you know, paid for some mastermind to learn about the secrets of SEO. Let me tell you, there are no secrets. Well, it's not that they're secrets. They're things that we don't know, but it's things we can all learn really, really easy. And you know what, what we're talking about here is the fact that, look, if, if I've got a YouTube channel and I link my YouTube videos to my website, my website blogs to my YouTube channel or Facebook posts or anything else that I do on social media. Number one, you need to, you need to build your digital footprint. You need to, Dennis calls it digital plumbing. All your plumbing has got to be tied together. You know, this, uh, you know, that next guy here, I see Gert Visser, uh, Gert Visser at the tankless guys plumbing court. There you go. And it is Gert. This is really golden because if you want to be found for tankless water heaters in your area and say you're in Dallas, you don't want to just get found in Dallas. You want to get found in Dallas and Addison and Carrollton and Farmers Branch and Garland and Richardson and Plano and McKinney. And it just goes on and on. There's about 23 areas right around Dallas that, that we wanted to be found in. Yeah. 23. If all I'm doing is tankless water heaters, well, you know what? I need more than 23 pages. I need 23 pages that just say tankless water heater garland. But I may want to do tankless water heater flushing. Mm -hmm. I may want to do tankless water heater repair, tankless water heater installation. You could come up with 10 pages just for tankless water mm -hmm. heaters times 23 areas. There's 230 web pages. Yep. And if I do a search, 
on tankless water heater Dallas, if I scroll down a little bit, it's going to say people also ask, what's the cost of a tankless water heater? How do I find the best tankless water heater company? How, you know, why, how long does it take a tankless water heater to heat up? What's the advantage of a tankless water heater versus the regular, you know, water heater? So these are all of these questions that customers that are looking for you are asking. So Gert, what you'd have to do is pull out your phone, look at those questions. Let's say there's 10 of those questions on the PAA. Mm -hmm. It's called people also ask. And I say, Hey, that's a great question on what is a tankless water heater. It's blah, 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 blah. Oh, and then you answer the next question. How much does a tankless water heater cost? Well, it costs this much and blah, 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 blah. So you just, Gert, I bet you, you could answer those 10 questions in how long? 10 minutes? Oh, yeah. It, I, it, I take a minute to answer each question. I bet you you could answer those questions with zero preparation. Mm -hmm. So if you literally do the searches on the things you want to rank for, because the idea of are you Googleable, like actually Google the things you want to rank on. We're working on that. And then scroll down and look at what Google calls PAA. People also ask. It'll expand to like three or four questions. Click on those. Those expand even further. Gather up a list of, say, 50 of those questions on the things that you want to rank on. You're the king of tankless water heaters now. And then 50 questions. And you just spend one minute. If you want to go two minutes, that's fine. But you spend one minute answering each of those questions. How long does it take you to record those 50 questions? It's not going to take long. Let's say it, you just record the whole thing on your iPhone and you do the whole thing in an hour, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now you have 50 web pages. You have 50 videos, right? Which each, are 50 blogs, 50 videos. That's right. Because each of those videos becomes a YouTube short. It becomes a Facebook post. It becomes a blog post that embeds the video. Then you take the, the transcript out of that video, which is easy. There's lots of tools that do it for free. I use Descript, which is like a Swiss Army knife of these. We have VAs to do this. You don't have to do it. You have a VA do it on Upwork for like $2 a blog post. You take, $2 a blog post. Did you hear that? A dollar a blog post. <laughs> so you take, you take the transcript. You put it in the chat GPT saying, I'm Gert, and I do tankless water heaters in Richardson, Texas. Please convert this into a blog post with the proper headline and proper tags and all that kind of stuff. You take that and then you paste it into your WordPress or whatever as a new blog post. Now, if you don't want to do that, you just hire a virtual assistant or someone on Upwork or Fiverr to do that. And I bet you, you could do that whole thing, $150. If you record that one hour on your cell phone, upload that thing to Upwork, hire someone for $150, they will do the whole thing that I just mentioned. Now that process that I outlined on how you take this content and process it and post it to your Facebook and your YouTube and your website and your GMB and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, run ads against it. That's what we call the content factory. That's the whole process. And you could have someone do it for a hundred or two hundred dollars. And then how much would an SEO company or website company charge you to make another 50 pages? A fortune. 50 pages, probably at least five thousand dollars. I'm gonna say, to be honest. They were getting a thousand to two thousand dollars for ten pages. But the thing is, you're not doing it to try to save money. Not you're at you're all. not doing it to try to be cheaper. You're doing it because it's actually better quality and more relevant. Because if those web pages contain Uger talking about this, showing your expertise, showing customer photos and, and things like that, that creates more authenticity, more actual experience that Google's looking at. Because any spammer could just generate another fifty pages talking about whatever and. Google's saying, okay, well, if a spammer can generate these pages and you can generate these pages, then who's to say that you're legit? Mm -hmm. So Google came up with this methodology called EEAT. Which stands for? Experience, expertise, authority, and trust. And it used to be EAT, but they added the extra E, so it's EEAT. And the reason they did that a year ago is that all these AI tools allow you just to generate all kinds of nonsense because now- Massive content. You can generate a 2,000 page website in an hour or two using these different automated tools and there's spammers that are doing that. So what Google's looking for, listen to this real carefully. Google is looking to see whether you actually are a real garage door company, a real plumbing HVAC company. How? They look at your reviews, are they real? They look at the content that you have. They look at, are you talking about your experience? Does it look like something where you're just auto-generating all this kind of stuff where it's spinning off of some article kind of tool? But if you inject real pictures and video, real, not stock art or whatever, but like your actual technicians, if, so if it's Richardson tankless water heater, can you take a picture from Richardson where you've installed the tankless water where it's heater? it's geotagged. Yeah. 
And now you have something real. It's not because you're doing it cheaper and you're trying to hire someone from Pakistan. It's because you're trying to do it the right way where you're injecting your experience. This goes back to if you want to lose weight, you have to do the dieting. You have you control what goes in your mouth. You I don't just adjust your scale. Yeah, you can't pay some external person to do that because they can't do the SEO. What they can do, if you make the content, like I just mentioned, they can do the processing and the posting and tweaking the website and all that, but then they're not doing SEO. The result of doing what we're talking about is you will rank in search because you're giving Google what it wants to see. You're feeding the scale. When you step on the scale and it says you've lost 10 pounds, it's not not because you tricked the scale. It's because you did the things that are necessary for the scale to say, this is, yeah, that's correct. You, you have lost 10 pounds. So so here's the deal. And look, I just put the link in there to Dennis Hughes' video uh, called Content Factory, which is what we're talking about. And what we're going to jump back into questions because I, yeah. I, I know there's a bunch of questions. But guys, this is something that literally got sparked from a phone call probably a month ago about a knowledge panel. And it's probably longer than that. It's probably a month and a half ago. Then a month ago, I went and met you at Digimarcon here in Dallas, got on stage and watched him do this. And I'm like, but wait a minute. What if we change this? What if we do this? What if we do this? And then that led my mind to running and came up with a complete idea. Are you Googleable? So that's what we're working on now because everybody needs to know that every business that we're in y'all. Uh, so let me get back into questions for a minute. Uh, but yes, Gert, this is golden home repair, home rapid repair says, thank you, Roger. You are more than welcome. Uh, Roger says, this is my, our business. And I've been paying SEO for two months. SEO stands for sucking everything out. I'm just going to let you know <laughs> they are sucking every dollar you have. Out. And, and I told Dennis yesterday that literally, I remember walking into the marketing companies and saying, guys, my phone's not ringing enough. I'm like, well, you just need to spend more money. Oh, give and us three more months. That was always that. Yeah. Or, or either spend more money or give us longer. And, and it's like, guys, I need my phone to ring now. Well, then spend more money. And that's what it always was. And I remember the, the last marketing company, not the ones that I've got now, but the last one that I had that really ripped me off that was part of the big crook job, they were charging me $1,000 a month just to watch my ads. And guys, they weren't working. Uh, Roger says a total house cleaning service in Garland. Dude, that, look, house cleaning. It's a local service, isn't it? Yeah. What you're talking about, starting out building. And, and if you go watch this video that I posted, guys, you're going to see his dollar a day, his, his grid, nine videos, make three top of funnel, make three mid funnel, make three lower funnel, put a dollar a day behind each one of them. So for a week, you're talking $21 a level. Find out which one does the best. And if you don't have one generating over 10%, mm -hmm. shoot three more. Come up with something that generates at least 10%. It's so funny because we're talking in the podcast earlier. And I put the link in to the Trade Talks, the other channel. To him, it's not, you're not buying advertising. You're investing in your business. It is ROI. When you invest $10 to get $100 back, how many times a day would you do that? All day. Every day. All right. Brett Hackman says, if my lower element exploded, does that mean I need a new water heater? No, Brett. Uh, if your lower heating element exploded, popped, busted what it did, what you need to do is turn off your water heater, drain it down completely. And I say that because if it's exploded, you may have a hard time getting it out. I know some plumbers that will change it live. They'll create a vacuum, pull the element out, and have the other one ready to shove in. But I have had elements that I had to fight to get out because with all the corrosion on them once they pop. But, Brett, I'd also look at how old is the water heater. If it's older than six or eight years, you may say, hey, look, I, I don't want to invest a lot of money in this. It's just time to get a new water heater. So, no, just because it's busted doesn't mean you have to. Global Wildfire Equipment, welcome back in. This is glad to make this live stream. Glad you are here. Robert Kane says, hello from Cleveland. Go Browns. Are you a Browns fan? Are you a football fan? Do you? I like to play instead of watch. Like to play? Yeah, exactly. Or if we eat hot dogs, then I'll, I'll so, join you. So, There's sl food involved. Slam dunking on elementary kids. There we go. It's a lot of fun. ICAST Enterprises this is Global Wi-Fi Equipment. Glad you made it in. Absolutely. Uh, this is great stuff. Elron Humperdink says, yo, what's up? How are you doing? 
Big Country Rocks. There we go. Okay, guys, this is the link to the other channel. And I'm telling y'all, go over there. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. That way, when the videos come out, you see it. Because what we said in there and talked about for an hour will blow your mind. Because we talk about questions you should ask, things you should do, things to look at. And, you know, I explained in there literally that yesterday, opening up these, these tools. And, I mean, think about what you do for a living. You've got tools that help you do it better than anybody else. Man, you showed me some pretty cool tools yesterday. And it was like walking behind the curtain and seeing the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and it's like, wait, this is this is how this works? And that's about what it's like, guys, that they keep it hid from us so we can't see. It says, Old Country telling everyone to follow you guys all about getting more folks into blue-collar trades. And that is exactly what it's about. Uh, I love it. Appreciate you so much. Okay. Does this tie into backlinks? Man, we talked about backlinks. You know, backlinks can be great, but you know, they can also kill you. Yep. How good are they? How quality are they? Go go ahead. Talk talk about backlinks. backlinks. So Gert, that's a great question. Backlinks are the heart of SEO because Google's seeing who are you associated with. So if I look at your website and all I see are links from other sites in Bangladesh, then I'm going to assume that you must be a Bangladesh company. But if you are a Garland tankless water heater company, I expect to see lots of links from other businesses and people and organizations in Garland. And I expect to see a lot of other tankless water heaters, the manufacturers, the associations, the other you know plumbing HVAC companies linking to me, talking about the topic you want to be known for. So backlinks are a way of demonstrating signal and trust in the neighborhoods that you hang out. And so that's what Google is looking for is who's linking. But if all the links are coming from porn sites or coming from spam blogs or whatnot, then Google's going to assume that you're a porn site or a spam spam blog, right? It's Mm -hmm. very obvious that it links, backlinks are a way of saying, who is this business associated with? So therefore, I can determine what the website is without even having to go to the website. So if you try to buy backlinks, Google can probably see it, A, and penalize you. And then B, it's probably not relevant. So if you buy links on Fiverr and these other places, it'll say like, hi, DA sites, you know, DA70, you know, domain authority, hi, yes, but is it relevant? So maybe it's some, you know, random website that has nothing to do with what you do, but it has high domain authority. That's not going to help you. Because it has to be relevant to your city or to what you do. If it's not, Google's going to say, this looks really suspicious. And and the funny thing is, it may just be, hey, it's not going to help you. But worse, it could be, hey, this is actually going to hurt you. And it it can hurt you through something that's called Google bowling. Because what happened is a few years ago, well, it's like 10 years ago, even more than that, you used to be able to just buy links. And SEO was really, really easy to do because you could just buy. I what? never did this. Links were great. You got Because you would just buy a bunch of links, and if and the client didn't rank, you just buy enough links until eventually they ranked on the thing. You could just buy garbage links from whatever. That's what worked a long time ago, up until maybe like five years ago, right? And then Google started to penalize people for buying crappy links. So then people who were really smart, they said, you know what? I'm going to stop buying links because it's hurting me. I'm going to start buying those links for my competitors. Yeah, and that would boy, tank the competitors, and that's called Google Bowling. And because Google's caught on to that, now Google Bowling only sort of works because they're wondering what – because Google's trying to decide, like, did they actually buy the link? Right. Did a competitor did do that to try to hurt them? them? Or did they hire an agency, and that agency hired another agency who hired another agency? The mm. thing is, if you've hired an agency to do SEO, it's very unlikely – that they are not subbing to work to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Even, it, even the good ones. If you trace it all the way back, there's probably someone on Fiverr who's the one making you know $50. Now, maybe that website, they charged you $30,000, and then that agency paid $3,000 to this other agency, and that agency hired someone for $300 to actually do the work. So your $30,000, actually, there's so many middlemen along the and way. And that guy at $300 did not even doing the work. He's having his cousin do it for $50. Because it, it, it's it's like that. Seriously, like I would ask the agency, like, okay, I know you say you guys are doing the work, but it's, we know that we all sub work to because there's no way you can be an expert in everything. So, are you subbing the work? 
And a lot of them will say they're not, but they are. And, and you hire VAs to work for you. There's nothing and wrong I with that. And I openly do that. I you, was you in Pakistan two weeks ago. Hanging out up. with VAs. Yeah. What, meeting, introducing me to new VAs. Yeah. We hired one yesterday. So you're over there. Yeah. But you train them. You yeah. don't just, you don't just, and we did hire one yesterday because we need just one thing done. But you don't just go over there and hire 50 VAs and say, man, I'm just going to start throwing work at y'all. No. They got to be qualified. And how do you qualify them? Well, that's why we have the content factory training. Just like if you're hiring, you're a master plumber, you're going to hire an apprentice. Well, they got to go through this training. They have to work under a master, demonstrate they can do the work. Someone else is supervising it. Just like in the trades, right? There's this whole apprenticeship kind of model. It's the same thing in digital marketing. But the trouble is because there's no certification, anybody can declare that they're a social media expert. I'm a social media expert. I took this one YouTube class over the weekend, and now I'm Now I'm I certified. know everything. Now I can sell all these packages. I've learned how to sell the stuff. So they focus so much on selling, they don't actually know how to deliver. Because that's the biggest thing in internet marketing. If, if you're in my neck of the woods, you're just going to hear, how do I get more leads? How do I sell more customers? How do I convince that pest control company to pay me $3,000 a month. Well, let me tell you the script and let me tell you, here's how you do cold outreach. And if they say this, this is how you overcome objections. And here's all these sales techniques about fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And how do you one call close them? You know, all the like sales techniques where you psychologically and, and, and try to manipulate guys, someone to buy. It happens every day. They're focusing at the, the person talking to you is a salesperson in the, He's you focusing know, on this. in the car sh showroom. I talk to the mechanic in the back. That's all he's focusing on. Yeah. He does not, he does not, number one, he does, and I, w I wish Will was here. Dennis has a protege who's learning under him. And I asked him, I said, look, what makes you good? He says, I care about these people I work with. And he's learned how to actually do the work. Because most people, they're just salespeople, account managers, and they're there just to talk to you and butter you up. Uh -huh. But if you, if I was an account manager at some agency or the, or the owner, where I'm just the head salesperson, and you ask me a technical question, I wouldn't know the answer. Right. Right. So that's why I believe you as a tradesman should talk to the person who's actually doing the work. And which, if the, which most of them will never let you do. So the whole agency world is about to explode. It's already falling apart because this model that has worked so long, which is there's an account manager, like someone who just talked, you talk to on the phone who doesn't actually know anything. They just ask you how your weekend was and that kind of thing. That's one layer. And then they're like the shield between the people in the back that are doing the work. And now that's worked in the restaurant industry because, you know, you talk to the waiter who takes your order. But then there's someone in the back who's actually cooking the food and chopping the vegetables and, you know, slicing whatever. But in the world of digital marketing, the, the account manager model no longer works because there's too many levels of nonsense. Now you need to have efficiency because the, the AI tools are so powerful now that we can train up specialists who can take that content from the client and actually implement directly from there. Okay. I was checking to see if I, if I thought that Google had a lead capture on it and they don't, but because we're, we're, we're building a program to help people with this and there's a, a big reason for it. Uh, I did put the link in there to Dennis use content factory video guys. If this is something you're in, watch this video because it's going to help you understand what we're talking about, about doing this and why it all needs to tie together. Uh, Pascal says, just joined the stream. I'm a working student at an online marketing agency. Interesting topic. It is. It is. And, and Pascal, I would tell you, look, go over to Blitzmetrics. Go over and check out where all this stuff is and watch some of these videos and see if your company's doing things that way. Uh, watch the podcast when it comes out. Listen to what we're talking about. Because, guys, this is stuff that so many people are telling us each and every day. Mm -hmm. when, when I tell y'all I spent, I, I mean, almost $50,000. I spent $47,000 to marketing companies that made my phone stop ringing. And that will kill a business. So that's why I get passionate about this. That's why I, I'm, I'm working on some of the things I'm working on. But, man, it is great stuff. Uh, Global Wildfire Equipment says, great strategy. Jeff McCollum, how are you, Jeff? Says, love it. Uh, iCast Enterprises, just this one tip is going to help us to go 10x faster. Guys, look, if you do, I'll tell you what, if you will watch that Content Factory video 
and do what it says on her. It's not hard to do. You just watch that. Most companies could double their revenue. And, and, and I'm telling you, unless you're just this big, huge company already, if I was a small company and I was watching that, and because I did, I watched this the other day when I went to pick Dennis up at the airport. I thought, wait, this means me sitting down for one hour and shooting video. One. That's just going to drive revenue to my company. Imagine if you did that once a month, once a week, a different topic. You want to talk about tankless water heaters today? You want to talk about gas water heaters tomorrow? You want to talk about electric water heaters the next day? Guys, this is content that is going to make your phone ring. And this is content that you're creating, you control, you own, and the neat thing about it, man, and look, I've always preached organic SEO. Yeah. I want my keywords right. I want the pages right. I want my domain authority right. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. I can't make more people search for a plumbing problem tomorrow. But if I'm doing dollar a day, you know what I can do? I can log into my account and double it, triple it. Instead of a dollar a day, I want to spend five a day. Mm -hmm. I need the phone to ring tomorrow. You know what? I'm going to turn up my ad right now. Mm -hmm. And it's literally that easy. Yeah. Especially with things like Facebook ads, because you can go to the Facebook ads library and you can see what all your competitors are doing. You can literally type in their name or another company, you know, that's doing a good job, type in their name and it shows all their ads. Literally, you can just copy their ads, copy their landing pages. If it's working for them, it'll probably work for you. It, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's funny. I mean, I mean look at Russell Brunson. One of his very first webinars he put out, he said, look, I watched what this other company was doing, and I built my <clears throat> landing page to look like theirs because what I had built wasn't working. Right. I used the same colors. I put the same product in the same place. I used a lot of the same fonts. I used the same headings. I, I changed it up to fit me, and all of a sudden, I'm selling like crazy. Yeah. Guys, these ads work, and you can find out what anybody's ad out there is that, that is, you can go to a, uh, on Facebook, you can go to a site, and they'll say this company is running ads or this company is not running ads or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And if they're running ads, you can click on that and go in and look at their ad. There's so many things you can do. Yeah. See how long they've been running, what they've been spending, how they're performing. You can do the same thing on TikTok. Google, it's a little harder, but there's other tools like SpyFu made by a friend, Mike Roberts, where you, you can see how much they're spending, what's their cost per click, what keywords they're buying, what's their ad copy. All of this is called funnel hacking or as part of what's called competitive intelligence. That sounds so much what, better. What difference is there between, you know, a garage door company in Richardson versus a garage door company in San Diego versus Austin, Texas? I mean, it's, it's like plumbing guys. It it's the same runs thing. downhill. Yeah. So you literally, the beauty of local services is that you have thousands of people that do basically the same thing. And you can just copy that same technique. So what works for SEO, what works for Facebook ads, what works for building websites, you can just cut. Why, why do you need to pay somebody $47,000 when you have a template, you can just copy and pay someone on Upwork $375 like we did yesterday to do the thing, right? It's, it's nuts. Uh, sorry, I, I'm going to get the heat turned off in here, and I don't know if he's in here or not, but I am fixing to start sweating, so... Here's the thing, guys, and, and, and this is why it's been such a big deal to me. And I told you all this, that I got ripped off. And it almost put me out of business. And I'm looking at all this, and my whole big thing behind it is why don't people know this? Why, why don't they understand? Why, why, do we, why do we just find a new marketing company that's doing the exact same thing? Look, I got tired of getting ripped off, so I went and learned social media. But then I realized, look, so social media is not enough. I can't turn up social media. Right. I can't make more people watch my YouTube videos tomorrow. I can try to make them better. I can try to do that, and, and it has. It's grown. It's helped. But here's the thing is that doesn't always make the phone ring. But if I can put out twice as many ads that I know are, are, are generating 10x what I'm spending – it's a smart investment. It's ROI. I'm paying for advertising that's working. I'm not just gambling. Yep. I'm not just going to the casino and throwing 10 grand on the, on the, I mean, don't get me wrong. If I could walk in, throw 10 grand on the roulette wheel and walk away with a hundred grand, I'd do it every day. 
Matter of fact, I would move to Vegas just say, hey, I just got to swing by on the way to the lake or the beach or whatever. It doesn't work that way. But this stuff works. Uh, Jeff McCollum, we, we had this conversation last night. Would this would would be great for the restaurant industry? Would this be great for the restaurant industry? Restoration industry. Yeah. Restoration. Okay. And I'm thinking restaurant because we were like, my eyes aren't as good as yours. Yeah. Because it's a local business. Yeah. If you have a brick and mortar location or you service an area that you drive to, you're a local business. And local businesses are what this is all about. More, more so than even, you know, when I first started talking to this, I'm like, look, I get found for the word plumbing on YouTube. Anybody in here right now, you, you can pull out your phone, go to YouTube, search the word plumbing, and, and you're going to find me. Normally, I come up right at the top. I said, look, I want to do that on Google. He's like, man, that's going to be hard. But we started looking at how do you do that and what does it take? And he said, look, Roger, for local, that's easy. You're competing against 50 restoration companies around you. You don't have to be the best restoration company marketing in the world. You've got to be the best one marketing in yeah. Plano, Texas. Yeah. And, and that's do, what he talks about, slam dunking on elementary kids. It's easy. You only have to win in that market. So if I'm a Fort Worth restoration company, that's easy. But the thing is, if I want to win to where it's almost like cheating, and I have the Roger Wakefield of restoration, and I submit a guest blog post on, here's how I restored this old home, and it had these problems, and this is what we did. And, you know, kind of like the behind the scenes, step by step, this old house, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And whoever is the Roger Wakefield of restoration, I guess blog post on their site or I submit a video that they share on their YouTube or I'm on their podcast, what is Google going to see? Google's going to see like, well, the Roger Wakefield of restoration is talking about this Jeff McCallum guy. This is definitely related to restoration. So if I'm a plumber, if, if I had a plumbing HVAC company and I wasn't ranking very well, and I was listening to this podcast, and I know that Roger Wakefield is trusted by Google when it comes to plumbing. Of course, YouTube is owned by Google, and he's got a strong YouTube. Then I would try to do everything to be associated with Roger Wakefield. I'd say, hey, Roger, you know, I just did this one job at this one home, and I'd love to, I, and I noticed you made this video about this. I noticed you had a blog post about this. I would love to contribute a blog post. Or I'd love to add to your existing blog post. Can I do that? And Roger would probably say yes if it was good content. You bet. And so what I'm doing is I'm associating myself with other people that already rank on the keyword or topic that I want. And when I say rank, I don't mean the 10 blue links. I mean show up in video, show up in PAA, show up in news, in image search, in top and bottom ads, and there's in map results. There, there's like 15 different places that you can rank on Google besides the regular 10 blue links. And the whole... 10 blue links thing is going away, which is what we talked about in the beginning, because ChatGPT is forcing everything into these dynamic search results, these knowledge panels. So if you do a search right now on Roger Wakefield on your phone, you're going to probably see these colored boxes. That's the knowledge panel. But now this search generative experience called SGE is showing colored boxes on everything that you're showing. It's basically their ChatGPT answer now called Gemini. And so those are dynamic knowledge panels. I spent three full days with Google engineers just a few weeks ago. I had to sign an NDA and all you that, bet. saying I wasn't allowed to talk about what we talked about. He's not even going to tell you he was there. But basically what we talked about was how do we win when Google switches everything soon to SGE, to, to these knowledge panels, where they pr basically provide like the one answer. Because if you've been doing traditional SEO and traditional SEO has been working for you, meaning people click on your website and you answer the question on, you know, tankless water heater, you're going to be in for a surprise because Google is now pulling information from your website and displaying it in the search results. So that information is there without even them needing to come to the website. Have you seen that before where you do a search for some question? like Yeah, because I click on this. What's the capital stuff. of Kansas? You and bet. it'll say it's Wichita. And it pulls the answer into the, the, the text above. These little snippets, mm -hmm. you guys know what I'm talking about? And this this is pissed off like the New York Times or whatever because then people don't go to the website and they don't consume ads. But the idea of pulling information, like, you know, Google's done this in travel. or they're, they're pulling the information and displaying it there without people having to go to the website, right? They're doing that more and more. 
The search generative experience is doing that at a massive scale. So the way you win in SGE is you do what we're talking about, where you put that information on your website so that they will show the answer and then they'll show where the answer came from. So a couple of weeks ago, Google announced the idea of following and commenting. So now they've introduced basically a social network embedded into YouTube search results because whoever contributed that comment, whoever contributed that piece of knowledge, Google's showing a consolidated set of search results and then who gave that contribution. So then if they click on that, they go to your company, they can call the phone number, they can contact you, right? So it's no longer the, the old world of SEO of just Keyword stuffing links. pages and backlinks. Those pages, people are no longer going to go to the pages because Google's pulling all the information across multiple pages and giving a consolidated result. Watch. As you do more and more searches over the next few months, you're going to notice these colored boxes, and you can say, that's what Roger and Dennis were talking about. This is These are the knowledge panels that they say are replacing what are the regular 10 blue links because Google got lazy thinking, well, people now are used to looking at 10 different results. No, people don't want to look at 10 things. They want to look at the one thing. And, and, and this is why we're doing this, y'all. This is what it's about. Google is not just going to be a marketing company anymore. It's not going to be a marketing company that comes in, puts the right words in the right places, in the right ways. It's all tied together. Google has access to everything. You, you know that. That's why when you Google me, my LinkedIn profile comes up. Well, they have access to that. But they can also read my LinkedIn profile and say, hey, he talks about plumbing a lot. Guys, this is what it's all about. Uh, Gary, yes, this is worth a fortune. You're 100% right. Mike Grimaldi says, can you show me an example what you're talking about? Maybe in a follow-up chat idea, uh, I'm not familiar enough with searches and questions page you were talking about. Yes, I'm very green in this area. Mike, no, number one, the, the link that I put up to the video to his content factory it is going to help show you that. Then what I recommend is you open up a Google tab and go in and search things. Go in and search Dennis U. You'll see the, con, the knowledge panel to the right pop up. Go in and search my buddy David Breyer. His will pop up. Me, mine doesn't pop up right now. There's a character in a TV show named Roger Wakefield. And that's what comes up on the knowledge panel. So I'm like, okay, I can never get that. But that's not true, is it? No, we can get it. See, you've just got to build everything. You've got to get your digital plumbing right. People, that, that's, that's why this is so intriguing to me. Because, look, I just assumed the marketing company I'm talking to is telling me the truth. I just assume that, oh, wait, there's a knowledge panel there. It's not me, so somebody else already owns it. No, they've got more content out that Google sees to make them think when people are searching Roger Wakefield, that's who they're looking for. Yeah. But we can fix that. There's a Dennis Yu that's a Hong Kong film director. Which is a and pretty big deal. Yeah. And so if you search Dennis Yu a long time ago, it'd be all the films this this guy has put all these like karate films and whatnot. And then there's other Dennis Yu's. That's a common name, by the way. Like Yu is a common you, you a two letter name. It's like Smith or whatever. There's a ton of them. But it wasn't it's not very in, popular over here in the United States. Just not as popular. No. And searches are, are different depending on where you're you, searching you met, from. Exactly. Yeah. And so when I argued with Zuckerberg on CNN in front of millions of people, <laughs> and then I got on all the major TV news networks to talk uh -huh. about privacy and data and that kind of thing, I became a public figure. And because I had all of these links from Wall Street Journal and NPR and LA Times and whatnot, I got more traffic than the other Dennis Hughes. And because I started publishing and speaking and that kind of thing, if someone did a search for Dennis Yu, it was more likely to be me than the other Dennis Yu. So Roger, or, uh, Google saw that, and so now they show me it's the number one I result for Dennis Yu. And so you don't have to be a celebrity to own the name of your company or your personal name. You just have to have more traffic and a stronger footprint that, that shows that you are such and such, you know, Texas green plumbing. Well, okay. So what Roger's talking about with digital plumbing and what an SEO company would do if they're doing it the right way is they'd first establish the footprint of all of your property. So even if you don't do stuff on social media, like I don't want to spend time on social media. I don't have time for TikTok and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Quora and Reddit and Snapchat and all that. 
But what you do is you claim your company name and you claim your personal name. It doesn't mean you have to do snaps and you just claim all that land is just Builds like your domain. Just like you know, you're you know, RogerWakefield.com. Grab that domain. Just claim all. I've those already properties. got it. You ain't getting it. Claim all the properties for your name, and if someone else has that same name, just get the .org or whatever it is, but make sure it's first name last name .com ideally. Then you tie all those properties together. So if you've made that one hour of videos where you've answered those fifty most common questions that people would expect, that's phenomenal. That, that you should do. You take those videos chop them up, have someone on Fiverr or whatever do it, and then you push it to your Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. Like all you, you take that video and you chop it up, put it in all these other places, then link them back together to your name. And then that sends a corroborative like signal across all these properties so that Google is able to triangulate. And when I talked to some the, the head of search quality at Google, he said, yes, this is a smart strategy because you are teaching Google and triangulating across all the things that are Texas green plumbing for, for your company or for you as a person. And so if you want to know what all those properties are, it's at blitzmetrics.com slash ACL. I've already, like I've already put the link in. Access checklist. I, I, I just put the link in. And if, if you don't have time to, and you maybe you have a, a son or daughter, right? Some teenager or whatever, they can go through and just go ahead and make all your accounts for you. And, and, and guys, look, th this access checklist is amazing because if he does this for you, these are the accounts he needs access to. That way he can hook the plumbing up. That's why, guys, this is so, it, it, it's, it's almost embarrassing that it's so easy to do and we're not doing it. As entrepreneurs, as different type business owners, and I know I'm way behind on my comments, so I'm fixing to have to get going on that. But, but, but guys, this is stuff that is going to change your business. It's going to change your life because this changes your legacy. This is how you get found and, and become the person that you want to be. Uh, Roger Betancourt says, SEO, the result has not been good. And, and it's normally not. H how often do people normally stay with a marketing company? The average is three to nine months. Three to nine. So call it six. Because it's not freaking working, y'all. And, and, and it's that easy. And, and look, I, I get excited about this. I get, I get loud about it. I have been ripped off and I got tired of it. And it's funny. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and she's like, Roger, you've always wanted to own a marketing company. It's like, yeah, because they are ripping people off. That's why I started my plumbing company. The company I worked for was talking about the things they're going to say and do to make people think they're better when they're really not. And I'm like, I don't like this. I don't want to be part of this. Jason Smith says, how does Google get the price on how much a plumber or whatever trade you're in on a service? Because I will get Google that says it should be around this much. Google crawls every plumbing website there is. And there's a lot of plumbers out there, a lot of plumbing companies that, that put their prices out there. They're getting away from it because now people want to get a person in front of them to make the sale, to, to be honest. They want to get out and talk to you. They want to look at everything, which it's a good thing because now they want to look at everything. If you call me, to, and we, we've talked about this a lot, if you call me to fix a toilet and I inspect everything, realize you've got a water heater up in your ceiling that's 12 years old and it's a six-year water heater, I should recommend you make a change there. I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm just telling you, hey, Mr. Dennis, look, you got a water he heater up there that's twice as old as the warranty is suggested. It's time to replace it, but you do it whenever you want. It's still working right now, so I'm not telling you you have to, but it's something to think about. So it's a big deal, but that's how they get the pricing. They crawl every website out there. If they see water heaters listed from New York to California, from Washington to Miami, and they say, hey, the average price is $1,200 because the cheapest people in the world are putting their prices out there, that's what they say it should be. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. Yeah. Google gets information from all the websites and everything we put out there. Uh, thanks for the interesting info. You are more than welcome. Oh, that was a gold nugget. I don't know which nugget it was 30 minutes ago, but I'm sure it was. Jeff McCollum says, how long does it take to get access to your knowledge panel after you get your business bio up on Google? That depends. First, you have to be able to trigger knowledge panel. Tie all so your stuff together. You have, so once you tie it together, then you start searching for your name. And if that doesn't, if your knowledge panel doesn't show up, search for your name plus your business, search for your name plus other things that would 
find who you are. And then when you see the stub of a knowledge panel show up on the right side, that might take a couple weeks. It might even take a couple months. Then you click on it and you click on the button for claim knowledge panel. And then you go through the process of getting Google verified, which is not the same thing as like getting, getting verified on Instagram or whatever. It's like verifying this is who you are, upload your ID, passport, You're legit. that you kind bet. of thing. And then you've claimed your knowledge panel. At that point, you can start to influence Google saying, no, this is not the right picture of me. This is actually this other person. Claiming to be me. Yeah. And then you can start to move to have a full knowledge panel. So if you have more high authority links, more articles, more podcasts, more guest blog posting, that'll start to trigger the full knowledge panel Big, instead full of the stuff. Knowledge yeah. And, and then amazing. you start running dollar a day against it. If Google sees that there's more searches on Jeff McCallum, that is you as the Jeff McCallum, they're more likely to show that full knowledge panel. Love it. And that might take three to six months after that. But there's no set time frame. It might take a year. It might take two weeks. It all depends on how much search traffic you have relative to the other Jeff McCallums, uh, relative to the other names of the business that you have. Troy Allen Lives is a great conversation. Thanks. You're more than welcome. Love Dollar a Day. Dollar a Day is huge. It, it, the more I learn about I'm like, how, how stupid am I that we never started doing this? Uh, I cast Enterprises is all right. Henry uh, Telpop said old country would take a thousand a month to keep two of his plum bobs collaborated. See, it, it man, it's, 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 it's hey, everybody's got a service to provide. Yeah. Uh, General Lee Roast Beef says it's the legend. I'm assuming they're talking about you because I'm here all the time. Uh, thanks, Randy. Uh, Henry Grimaldi said, or Mike Grimaldi says, thanks for the link to the content factory. That answers my question about. Proving examples, definitely watch this later. Guys, if 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 y'all don't go watch this link, I'm telling you, this is knowledge that a lot of people don't get. They don't understand. And this is kind of how your digital plumbing works, how you tie it together, how you, man, you tie your water line from your website to your personal page, to your LinkedIn, to your Google, to your YouTube, to everything. And Google starts looking like, like, wait, all this is tied together. This is all the same person. And, oh, my gosh, this person is talking about plumbing on every one of these places. Yep. So when people search plumbing, they might be looking for some of this information. And this guy's got a lot of it. So this might be very beneficial to them. It's huge. Jeff McCollum says, good to see you, Dennis. Home Rapid Repair says, ICOS Enterprises, the plumb bob is 1,000 years old. My face looks like I'm 1,000 years old. There you go. Uh, links are interesting. Link, look, good links are great. Bad backlinks really can't hurt you bad. Uh, SEO was crazy free back then. You know, it, it. I don't know that it's ever been free, but, man, the people that were doing it black hat like that, and, and look, I've, I've learned from some of them. And I'm like, well, why would you do that? I'm like, well, it works. Okay running a garden hose to a house instead of running a copper line works. But as a plumber, I know it's not the right thing to do. People do it all the time. Uh, have not seen him up close. Gert Mister says that that last marketing company wanted $11,000 just for GLSA ad spend. Uh, the so-and-so special media post did not create any calls. I'm truly at a crossroads where... I do not know a truly effective way forward. Gert, Gert look, you're, you're learning the, the way forward. And, and, and I mean that. Uh, that. That's the way I felt. When I pulled back the curtain and looked behind and saw what the Wizard of Oz is doing, it's like, man, this is not hard to do. Why don't more people know this? And to be honest, you can get the same tools. Uh, I've had HREF before, AHREF. I've had it before. I've had spy food before. I can look at other people and say, what words are they doing? How are they doing it? What he just told you about the Facebook ads. He's telling you whatever business you're in, go find the ads that other people are doing. Look what they're running. Look what they're stuck with. Look what they've stuck with for a long time and say, Hey, this either works or they're really stupid. And if you look at the ad and think, you know, that's really stupid. I wouldn't buy that. Okay. They've probably just put an ad up, put a $10 a month, budget on or something and, and never looked at it again. And they're assuming, Hey, it's up here making the phone ring. It may not be. How would you tell somebody like this? It says I, I'm truly at a crossroads crossroads where I don't know a truly effective way forward education. And, and that's what you're doing right here. Yeah. What, what, what would you tell them? 
somebody like that, where would you tell them to go? What would you tell them to look at? So, Gert, I always start with the CRM. Okay. Right, you want to make the phone ring? Start with where the phone calls are and figure out what has been driving the phone calls. Of course, if I didn't see the CRM, I would recommend LSA is the first place to start. But if you're spending, you know, 70 bucks a call, but your people, the CSRs or the technicians, it's not turning into these quota jobs that are making you money, spending more money on LSA is not going to help. So mm -hmm. start with that CRM and see where the calls are coming from, what the average job is worth, what kind of typical ROAS, you know, return on ad spend you're getting, then figure out how to tune your LSA, which you should own yourself and manage yourself. Then you can move to Google ads, then you can move to SEO, and then you move to Facebook ads and just do boom, 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 boom. And along the way, make sure it's profitable. So if your LSA is profitable, turn it up from $1,000 a week to 2000 a week to 3000 a week, like for these other guys. But don't just hand it over to someone else who says, we're going to spend $11,000. Well, we don't know if that's the right amount because how many phone calls do you get? How many of those, you know, turn into appointments, which then turn into, the, you know, jobs that are closed? That's what we care about is that money at the end. So inside service Titan or whatnot, I, I start first with where the revenue is. And I go backwards. I don't start with all these cool things like, oh, let's get on TikTok or whatever, and then hope it'll trace all the way forward in the revenue. I start with revenue, and I go back. And, and guys, what he's talking about there, about you don't know if the CSAs are doing their job, if the techs are doing their job. If they're not doing 85 to 90% close rate, 80 to 85% close rate around in there, if you're losing money, Every time they go out. And I know that sounds bad. You say, well, I'm not losing money every time. Well, what if you're losing money two out of three calls they go on every day and you don't realize it? The more your phone rings, the more calls they go on, the more money you're going to lose. So you've got to make sure everything's right in-house. It might not be a marketing problem. It, it may not yeah. be a marketing problem. Yeah, we see a lot of cases where they're spending a lot of money on marketing, and I look at it and I say, Man, your phone's ringing yeah, a lot. Yeah, marketing is great. You're just not closing. You're not answering the phone properly. Yeah, if, if your phone rings a thousand times a month and you're not running 900 calls a month, there's a problem there. If your phone's ringing a thousand times a month, you're running 600 calls a month. Wait, you're losing 40% of your marketing dollar. It means every dollar you spend, you just threw 40 cents away. You've got to get everything right. Uh, and I know I'm, I'm getting behind on comments again. Uh, I love VAs, absolutely. Uh, I resemble that remark. Kevin Lee says, hey, guys, how are you? Uh, good to see you in here. Uh, what is that? I'm going to start skipping over some of these that are just talking to each other. Sorry for confusion. Old country is Jason's nickname. Good luck. Okay, Kyle Hoffman, I'll tell you what. You're a dog. Uh, right, right up here, the Longhorns are coming to take care of business. Just going to let you know that. And if that's all you can talk about, uh, I say get out and learn more plumbing, brother. Uh, great apprentice. He's a good guy. Or great journeyman now. Uh, good, good guy. Euro Yard Service. Some SEO online marketing agencies are straight up crooks. Had my fair share of experience and dearly paid for it. That's what we're talking about. Guys, almost all of them are crooks. Okay? Almost all of them. No, watch this. Out of 100 marketing companies, that you could walk into today in the yeah. Dallas area, how many of them do you think are doing things right out of 100? Three. How many of them are doing everything right? None. Okay. D jackpot. I mean, I mean, guys, this is golden nuggets. We train agencies. Out. I know. Like, you guys are running home service businesses. I spend a lot of time training digital agencies. So we're helping them with the questions they have because they say, I got this one client. It's a landscaping company. What do I do? And we come in and look. You would, your jaw would drop the kinds of questions agencies ask us to help them with uh, oh, no, and no, the, the I, issues they struggle with. I, you I, would not believe it. I've done lunch and learns for big marketing agencies, 450 offices, 20 people in each one. So you're talking 900 people. And I'm reading through their website, and it's like they specialize in social media and SEO and all this and all this and all this. So they have me come in and do a lunch and learn because of what I've done on social media. And they're like, well, how do you do it? And I start talking about they're like, well, we can't do that. Well, we can't do that. Well, we can't do that. Why not? It's what it takes to do it. Yeah, but we can't do all that. Then why are you advertising that you specialize in it? Yeah. It blows my mind. And this is a conversation I had with them. And, you know, if you look up these SEO companies that claim they're really good, 
and you'll see that they don't have backlinks. You'll see their domain ratings. Most of them are zero. So if you're an SEO company and I see that you have no SEO going on, I can't even find the name of your company. There's no knowledge panel on the person. That's an obese person trying to give weight loss advice. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you where, where I saw this in, in real life. I used to be involved with Master Networks. I went to a event here. I used to be involved with them here in North Texas. I went to a chapter meeting. And there's a young lady in there. She's an SEO person. And I had been robbed. So I'm like, man, I need somebody. So I asked her, so will you, will you hang around and talk to me afterwards? And she said, yeah. So she hangs around. I said, okay, look, let me ask you this. I need my phone ring. I've got a plumbing company. What would you do? She said, well, the first thing you need to do is this. The second thing is this. And the second thing is this. I said, okay. So I'm like, how expensive is that? She says, you know, it's five grand, something like that. Okay. So I've got a question. Are you doing this for your company? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, you're here at a networking event. I'm sure that's to try to pick up business. And this is what you're selling to me, recommending for me to do. Are you doing this for your company? And I mean, she started crying. I said, what, what's wrong? I didn't mean to make you cry. She says, I, I'm not. I said, so you're not doing it because either it doesn't work or you don't think it works or you don't believe in it. Well, which is it? And, man, this girl is literally crying. And I felt bad because she's yeah. 25, 30 years old, thinks she's got her own business, and she's yeah. doing things great. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, you're telling me to do it if I want my phone to ring, but you're out here to get customers because your phone's not ringing. It doesn't add up to me. So I love the fact you say, look, does their website have SEO? Ask them, let me see your SEO report. Yeah. I want to I know what your domain authority yeah. is. And they're messaging you from julie123 at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, so well, what's your get website? Get off quick. And get then they say, really well, quick. we're so busy taking care of clients that we haven't had, you know, the cobbler's son has no shoes. Yeah, wrong. Yeah. My plumbing works at home, guys. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, wow, this is some high-level advice right here. We are needing at least 10 firefighters for next season, and this will help get us in front of the right ones. I, I tell you what, Global Wildfire Equipment, if, if you need 10 firefighters next year, you need to go over to the, the YouTube, the other YouTube channel, go over to the trade talks. I interviewed Libby. You need to check her out. She helps people like you get people. And matter of fact, I talked to Dennis about her like, look, because she can pre-qualify. And guys, I, I'm telling you, the relationships that I get to build doing what I've done have been amazing. And a lot like Dennis. Dennis is like, wait, how do I tie this person to this person? Y'all can, man, y'all can do great things together. And, and we're constantly looking at stuff like that. So I'm going to tell you right now, go find the, the podcast. And I don't know if it's out yet, but she was also on my live stream. So go into my history a couple of weeks ago and look at Libby. And it's about recruiting. And, man, she's got a good gig going on. There's a lot of scammers out there that will gladly take advantage of folks. 100% uh, Roger, great advice. Roger Wakefield owns the word plumbing on YouTube, uh, which creates bat links, backlinks for both, correct? Which creates global, global, global. Let's get in front of the right ones. Uh, you, you know, look, there are, yeah, yeah, okay, so you're right. Let me think back. Yes, if I put a post on Dennis's because we're both talking about social media and I make a post about social media and, and he links to a video that I did about it. That's a backlink that helps both and helps build both domain authorities. Backlinks with the right people are amazing. It's what it's just as good. I think is, is backlinking from my LinkedIn to my YouTube, yep. from my YouTube to my TikTok. It, it, it all ties together and, and Google sees all that. Guys, that's what that's what that's what it's looking for now. It's not just how many times does Roger have the word plumbing on this page. It's more than that now. Andrew Bagley says, "Hey guys, what do you think of AI answering systems for phone calls for taking calls? Do you know any good software to use? I'm currently making a call script uh, on Thoughtly. I don't like I don't like computers answering phones." I don't want that computer-generated voice. I want a person. What are your thoughts? I agree. And I've seen software in the last week or two where it sounds like a person, but the AI generation has a five- or six-second lag, as you know, 
where they say something that has to process and then it comes back. It does come back sounding it. There's one in my voice and it sounds believable, but it's not quite there. And you want to talk to someone who actually is a real person who's actually empathetic, not some. Now on a website, you can have a chat bot. Uh, absolutely. But on Love the phone, that. you want a real human. Because the last thing you want with a high, I mean, why, why would you do that? To try to save like a few cents. Think about how much money you're losing by not treating that potential customer properly. You where you could have gotten a new job, but you're trying to save 50 cents because you're trying to automate that piece. That is not the part you want to automate. Yeah, and, and, and average ticket for my plumbing company when I sold was about $550. Do I want to lose $550 just because I had you call a robot and they are talking to you? No. I mean, even if it sounds like me, like you said, it's not quite fast enough. And don't get me wrong, man, I'm working with Syllabi, and I love what Austin Armstrong is doing. He's like, Roger, we can we can make a character that looks like you. I showed somebody a video the other day that I did on there, and they're like, wait, that's not a real person? I said, uh-uh. But it's got a real person's voice. It's got a real person's appearance on the video. I'm like, I know. And I'm like, also, look, I want one that looks just like me and sounds like me. He said, we can do that. So those people that don't want to get in front of cameras, how many times do you talk to people that are like, I don't want to make yeah. a one-minute video? Yeah. Okay, make it through syllabi, syllabi. It's going to be fine. Have your text do it. Yeah. Have other people do it. Have your VA do it. Have somebody. I, I could literally, once I create this character that looks like me, I can have my team make videos for me all day long talking yeah. about something. Yeah. It doesn't have to be me. But me, I love being in front of I, Look, I enjoy this. I love reading the comments. I, I love having Dennis here. I get excited about stuff. <laughs> me and Dennis, I'm like, I'll be talking. It's like, Dennis, I'm getting chills again because I'm so excited about what we're talking about. It is really neat. Uh, we have a Discord channel. Uh, Roger Wakefield has a Discord channel. It's ran by Sean Strong. Uh, Zizi says, I have a question that you may have answered. For plumbing business, what do you do if you have a same to similar name to another business that opened up in your city? This is in regards to my plumbing. I'm going to answer it first. Is If your name is that close to the same, you picked a bad name. Uh, I would never open a business here called Dallas plumbing because there is a Dallas plumbing. I wouldn't even do Dallas, Texas plumbing. I'd want to get away from it because if they ever go downhill, do something bad and shut down, your name goes down too. What, what, what yeah. are your thoughts? Yeah. I get trying to put in your, you know, city name slash plumbing or someone else has that same name, but then you get into this trademark issue as well on who used it first. Like, you know, Tommy got in trouble for this A1 garage because there's all these other A1 kind you of bet. businesses. But there's nothing wrong with having your name in it, you know, Wakefield Plumbing, because then it ties to your personal brand. People trust it. And businesses nowadays, especially if they have consumers or customers that are under 30, they like to trust that there's some kind of person behind it. You know, so Colonel Sanders is now dead. But his name still you, you still see his cartoon. You still see that. And people no. like the idea, like they're buying from Joey or whoever it is, right? And like Tommy, you, you see his billboards and vans everywhere. There's there's like this picture of him wearing the red shirt like this. But Tommy's not the one who's going to come. Tommy's out, trying you know? to be like me. Gordon Ramsay is not going to be the one who comes. When you eat one of his restaurants, he's not the one who's serving you. you bet. But it's under his name, and there's kind of the trust. And people will pay. People like me will pay three times more to eat at one of Gordon Ramsay's burger restaurants. Right, it's, I've been I've to a steakhouse in, in, yeah. in, uh, in Lake Tahoe. Uh -huh. And it was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Yeah. Well, I didn't expect Gordon to come out. Right. You know, I know he's not there. But now let me talk about that from a plumber point of view. If I'm building a plumbing company and I've done things right and I have an exit plan, if my plan is to sell that company one day, maybe I don't want my name on it. Because Dennis may not want to buy Roger's Plumbing. He's like, I'm not Roger. So I understand that. So when I named my company, I did Texas because the state I'm in, I yeah. had expansion ideas, and I hadn't seen one. Green, because I'm a lead AP. I believe in water conservation. I believe in promoting that. I believe in talking about it. So it's the logo that comes by with the foot. It's green like a leaf. It's blue like a drop of water. There was so much thought that went into that. And when I designed it, and it was for a reason, and, you know, it led to a lot of conversations. Why have you got a foot for a, for a, a logo? You ever heard of your carbon footprint? It opens up a conversation. So 
man, when your name is that close to somebody else's, I feel for you. But I, I don't know if you've already done it. It's, it's kind of tough. Uh, guys, the only reason I'm not subscribed is we have a slight issue with permissions. Love what I'm hearing. Well, well brother, you should be subscribed. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, iCast Enterprises says, love that. Uh, guys, you got to get your digital plumbing right. How long have you been talking about digital plumbing? 15, 20 years. Guys, that's what it is. It, it's all got to tie together. It's funny because Google's just now, and, and this is nothing Dennis has told me, it, it's me watching and, and learning and seeing Google's changing what they do. And then when I ask questions from Dennis and other people, it's like, wait, it's Dennis is not just looking at SEO as what's written on the page anymore. And that's really what it used to be. What's written on the page and how many backlinks are there to it? Now it's, wait, what's written on the page, but what else has this guy done in the entire internet? Yeah. Google's taking into account social media ads, all this. So things are flipped upside down because it used to be it was just web pages. But if people are engaging and hanging out on YouTube, if there's stuff that they can pick up because of, you know, they're ordering on Amazon or there's voice things or there's apps on Android, Google's taking all those signals into account, including advertising signals. Dennis, you is the real deal. Absolutely. Uh, Dennis, you, I need your number. Look, you can go to Blitz Metrics and learn everything about Dennis. You can message him on LinkedIn. Yeah. Probably a good spot. Yeah. And, and Gert, feel, feel free to reach out to me. I'll reply back. I'm back on the plane tonight to Vegas. But during, and when I'm on flights, it's when I reply to people's messages. It might take me a day or two, but I'm the one who actually replies if you message me. It might Isn't take me neat? a day or two. It's not a VA. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Michael Brennan says, thank you very much. Very informative. Much appreciated. Global Wildfire Equipment says, this takes a lot of confusion out of marketing. Guys, it, it's... Okay, so, so I showed y'all a minute ago. We're, we're, we're working on a book. Are you Googleable? And it's a question that I asked. I woke up with this idea in my head. You know, I've worked with Pete Vargas. I've worked with Pat Quinn. Uh, I've done a lot of different things like this. But one of the things Pat Quinn used to say is, what problem do you solve for people? Who do you serve and what problem do you solve? And when I first started my plumbing company, I had to figure out how to make my phone ring. Well, I figured that out. And, and it's through doing everything I'm doing. But then the other night, after talking to Dennis and, and, and a couple of days later, and just, I don't sleep at night. Uh, I tell him all the time, it's like, man, I've been up since three this morning. My, my mind's going. But I woke up with this idea of, are you Googleable? And, and it's grown from there. But that's an idea because at the end of the day, that's what we need. If, if you are iCast Enterprises and, and you're looking for firefighters, if you're Fred's Plumbing in, in Las Vegas, you need to be found. And people search Google. That, that's the number one search engine. People search it. People search Google. But the same thing that we're talking about on Google, it works on Yahoo. Yep. It works on Bing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They're all search engine algorithms, and, and they know what they're looking for. And... What works on one of them works on the other one. It's not like, oh, well, we've got a whole different set of rules. We don't look at SEO. We don't look at any of that. We just pick who our favorite plumber is, and that's not how it works, guys. They're looking for information. Also find someone who's willing to get paid after the phone rings. I, I don't like that because they normally want more. They want a percentage. Uh, if you want me to do a job for you, you're going to pay me for it. Because here's the deal. I can make your phone ring, but it doesn't mean you're going to get the call. If your CSR is not doing right, if your plumbing technician is not doing right, most people are never going to work for anybody that just wants to pay after the phone rings. They're like, look, I got enough customers to pay me up front. I don't need to, to hope you do everything right. Uh, and then I got to worry about you lying to me about the phone ringing. Uh, it wasn't a real call. So, look, pay people up front, but find people that are going to do it right. Yeah. In, in the podcast, we asked about questions to ask. Things to ask, and I love that idea. Show me your SEO report. I want to see how you're – what is your domain authority? Is it above 30? Should be. I mean, you're a marketing company. You know what you're doing. Do it for you. Euro Yard Services, my Facebook ads account, got permanently suspended while I was working with an agency. Uh, what would you do? Create a new Facebook page so you can run ads again or run ads on Google. Your Facebook ad account and your Facebook page – and your Facebook personal profile are separate entities. If you set things up properly, 
you already should have a Facebook business manager that you gave the agency access through your Facebook business manager. The business manager controls the access to the different pages, ad accounts, other entities that you have. So everything has to go through your Facebook business manager. If your ads account got shut down, it may be because there's a cascading effect where if any ad account within that agency, MCC, or business manager got shut down, it'll often cause all the other ad accounts to get shut down. So you can always appeal and go back to Facebook saying, look, I, is, I, I'm just, that, that was the agency running the ad account. Yeah. So A, if you have access to that ad account, try to get it back because it has some account history which could help you. But B, you could just set up another ad account, which is really not a big deal. But I prefer keeping everything in the same ad account if we can instead. Because if you spin up too many ad accounts, then you look like a spammer. And then Google will shut you down because if it's got the same phone number, same credit card. Because a lot of spammers, they just keep cycling through ad accounts. Makes sense. But the key is you need to control access and own all your assets through the business manager first. And the same is true on Google. Same is true with like your WordPress, your website. You control the access and you give the agency a limited amount of access. If the agency owned the ad account, if the agency created the ad account, you down. A, you can get shut down because you don't know what's going on with all the other accounts. Yeah. And B, if you want to leave the agency, they'll say, well, sorry, that's our ad account. It's inside our business manager. We can't transfer that to you. And that is true. They, if they created the ad account inside their business manager, it cannot transfer to you. All right. Got just a few more questions here. It says, Drew S. says, I use Angie and Home Advisors. They have been great to me and keep me very busy. In Ohio, good for you. I would still recommend doing all this, Drew. Here's here's the thing. They're paid advertising. It's pay-per-click, okay? If you quit paying them, guess what? Your phone quits ringing. This starts building you organically to where maybe you can say, and, and this is what I did. And look, I love Google. Google's been great to me. But when I started doing YouTube, my phone started ringing without running Google ads. Now that I've learned about ads and, and, and dollar a day and all it's like wait i need to run ads again it's like absolutely if you're paying money to google guess what they want you to win and if you're tying it all together it's gonna help you win even more so uh, look i have no problem with angie and home advisors i know people that have done well i know people that hate them what i would tell you is do everything we're talking about it's only going to help you more agree with that okay global wildlife equipment says that is kind of like an mba professor uh, teaching business classes when they themselves have never even ran a lemonade stand. And it happens all the time. Kyle Hoffman, this better be a nice comment, says, what would you recommend for someone who wants to start their own company in the future? Does it pay to start building these tools now? Absolutely. Building domain authority, building your presence right now is not going to hurt you a year, two years, four years from now. Here's one thing you can do, Kyle. Start taking pictures and videos of things you're doing right now. You're out plumbing every day. Start posting it. Make posts about it. Make posts saying, look what I did today. When somebody gives your company a five-star review, copy that. Put it on your social media. Yep. It's going to be good stuff. Yeah. Because it's your reputation. When you start that company, you want to have the head start of reputation. Absolutely. Global Wildlife Fire says, yes, I saw Libby. Look, I'd go back and watch it again (laughs) because Libby is doing some great things. And it is going to help you when you need to recruit people. And, and I kid you not, I was talking to Dennis about it yesterday. Look, what this lady does can help us find people that we need to, yeah. to do the things that we're trying to do for Are You Googleable? I cast Enterprise says, Henry Wakefield, what is the link to the Discord channel? And you know what? Sean's not in here, and I don't see that Randy put it in. But, uh, man, you can probably go over to Discord and search either Roger Wakefield or the escort plumber, the expert plumber, something like that, and find it. Steve Harloa, brother, is in the house. What is up? Says, aloha, Roger, and everyone in the chat. I'm not in the chat. I'm working, but I'm listening. Well, man, Steve, I tell you what, this would be a good one to go back through and watch. Uh, Dennis, uh, we're almost at the end. Yeah. Go ahead and tell everybody who you are, yeah. what you do, and, and how they can get in touch with you, how they can find you and do things with you. So I'm one of the original search engine engineers at Yahoo from 20 plus years ago. Before there was a Google, I was building the analytics. So our job was to protect the search results from all these SEO people trying to trick us. So we have a completely different view being the search engine. And because of 
that experience and just being there, I basically retired 20 years ago because I sold my Yahoo stock, but you can never really retire. <laughs> so I happened to be there at the right place at the right time when social media started to take off. I was one of the first people on Facebook and I spent a billion dollars on Facebook and Google ads. And ever no, since- Now, not your money. Other people's money. Oh, okay. Okay. I think <laughs> For like man, Nike. Man, they, they did give you a lot of money to walk Starbucks, away, did Starbucks, Quiznos, the Golden State Warriors, a lot of big companies, you know, Ashley Furniture, the world's largest furniture company. So we've done a lot in local, and I've just found local to be the best place to play because my life's mission is to create a million jobs. Because I had the CEO of American Airlines as my mentor, and he showed me things I didn't even understand about how to... I, cause I was just a great math guy, a great engineer, a great mm -hmm. like data Chinese kind of, you know, test taking sort of paper drag. I think it's paper tigers, what we were called. And I didn't understand like business and all these other components. And he taught me this and it made such an impact on my life. I thought, how do I pay it forward? How do I scale this kind of mentorship, apprenticeship kind of model, which I know has been in the trades forever, you bet. but has never really been in, in digital because of all the like Lamborghini, look at how successful I am in that sense, right? So I thought, how do we change that? How do we drain the swamp of all these idiots out there that are just ripping off all these other people selling all kinds of nonsense, as you guys know? And it came upon me, you know what? We can create this mentorship program by partnering with schools, partnering with trade organizations, partnering with folks like Roger to be able to put all the data out there, put all the training out there create tools together. So when Roger said, hey, Dennis, I got this great idea. Are you Googleable? Let's make it a book and make it a tool. I thought, this is like my prayer being answered. Man, it's so cool. Roger reaching out. I was like, Roger, you must have like peeked inside my brain and, and known exactly what I wanted to do. So I've been doing this thing for over 30 years, believe it or not. Like, I feel like I'm 20. I'm almost 50. I'm a few months away from 50. I don't feel 50. I know the feeling. But this, like, I feel like everything is happening to us at the right time for the right reason. And the different struggles that we've had along the way have all built towards the things that we're in now. And we're all perfectly in the right place at the right time. So like being here with Roger and working on this Are You Googleable concept as a book, as a tool to bring together all the folks in trades so that there's accountability. We're not trying to kill the agencies. You know, we're not trying to just enrich Google's pockets. We just want accountability. We want there to be a real certification. You want to be a plumber? You got to get certified. You want to be a digital marketer or do SEO? You got to be certified, right? Mm -hmm. You want to fly a plane? You want to operate on a patient? Got to you, know what you're doing. You have to go through medical school and the training and all that. So I don't think anybody should be able to touch your marketing without being a Googleist, which is certified through the training. Absolutely. Guys, this is all stuff we're working on. Uh, you know, I've, I've showed y'all what we're working on this. Are you Googleable? I don't know if y'all recognize that guy on the cover or not, but guys, it's what we need to be. It's what all of us need to be. And meeting Dennis, getting to talk to him, got my brain going based on results I've had from marketing companies. And, and it's all led to this, and it's going to be really, really good stuff. Uh, Steve Arloa, great to see you in here, brother. Thank you so much. Global Wildfire Equipment. Says, plus your YouTube and other social media content or creates evergreen feedback. Guys, here's the deal. I tell people every day, if I get hit by a bus today when I leave here, the phone's going to keep ringing at Texas Green Plumbing. It's going to ring for four or five, ten years. I mean, it's going to slow down because I'm not updating that content. But to be honest, Randy and the rest of the team could do that. So you're right that evergreen content is a lifesaver. And it's free marketing, free advertising. Not free. I know you had to pay to create it, but once it's out there, it's there. And the, and the funny thing is now I don't pay Google. Google pays me, which is a cool thing. Variable Sin says, yo, Big Raj, like your channel, brother, but just want to say I don't like seeing you not in the field anymore. You don't get your hands dirty. Man, I tell you what, we've Randy's been dragging me out to the barn, so we've been doing some stuff. We've been getting a little dirty. Try not to, but but we've got some videos coming up where I'm going to. We just moved out here to the outhouse a couple of months ago. We've got a ton of remodeling to do, uh, and it's going to be me in there doing it with Randy's help, of course. So it will be fun, and, man, I, I do love being in the field. Global Wildlife says, thanks for your great training. See you next year. Guys, I hope each and every one of y'all have a very safe Sunday night, I guess, because New Year's Day is when the Longhorns play. Uh, looking forward to that. Alabama, it, you know, it don't matter to me who wins that game. 
Alabama, Michigan. Get ready for Texas. We're coming. Guys, thank y'all so much for being here. This has been fun. Dennis, oh, my God, thank you for coming. Thank you, Rob. This has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, pay attention because I love the things that we're working on, the things that we're doing. It's going to be life-changing for a lot of people. And those of y'all that are in here that, you know, like you said, look, I'm starting out on a marketing company or whatever, jump over to Blitz Metrics, look at the training there, look at the videos I posted today, learn something there. It's a great way to start. And reach so, out if I can help in any way. I want to see you guys grow. Absolutely. Connect with Dennis. Connect with me. If you're not connected with either of us on LinkedIn, please do so. And those of y'all that are in here, uh, Steve Arloa, Architectural Sheet Metal 101, great channels, great people. Connect with them. Y'all have a happy new year. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it.